welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking a Cryptic, where I'm going to be attempting a puzzle today called The Four Pyramids by Eric Rathbun. Now, Eric's appeared on the channel lots of times before, um, but the reason I'm doing this one actually is not because it's been recommended, it's because it's been requested by several people who have struggled and have not been able to solve it. Um, so I thought I would give it a go. It has got five stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany, which probably means it's monstrous. It has been solved by 12 people, um, which doesn't seem like an enormous number. And I'm slightly, the thing I'm most worried about here, well, I'm worried about two things. Firstly, that I won't be able to do it, but in that case, you won't see the video. So, <laughs> so these comments will be uh, to some extent otios. But the second thing I'm worried about is I have done two very lengthy videos in the last couple, of, well, last three days. So I don't really want to take up too much of your time with video after video that are sort of enormous magnum opuses. Um, but let's let's hope I'll be able to get this done in some sort of reasonable time. Um, but we'll see in a moment or two. Uh, I want to start today's video actually with um, with just a shout out to Bobby Bardsley, who <laughs> yesterday I was solving this amazing puzzle by Fritz Dist. You must check out that puzzle if you haven't seen it yet. It's absolutely astonishing. Uh, but in the middle of that song, oh, in the middle of that song, in the middle of that solve, I sort of lost my marbles. Um, and I, I got distracted by some memory in my head of uh, modern major generals, Gilbert, the Gilbert and Sullivan uh, song from the Pirates of Penzance. Um, and Bobby has rewritten that song with... <laughs> with a spin that I suppose in some way relates to me. I think some of the lines are a bit flattering, to be honest. Um, but I was really taken with this. It's a very popular comment on yesterday's video. Um, I need to do something with this to share it more widely because it really is. It's very clever. It scans very well. This has obviously taken Bobby a lot of time. And the least I think I can do is to attempt to uh, sort of mumble a couple of these verses. So... I did have a quick practice of this. I, I realised I was going to need a lot of breath, so bear with me if this goes totally wrong. Hmm. I am the very model of a puzzle-solving gentleman. I'm quizzical and cryptical, a very modern mentalman. I know the rules of Stoku, of killer and of equal sum, and where on German whispers lines the digits four and six can come. I'm very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I'm often asking questions, whether real or rhetorical. About Sudoku's secret, I am teeming with a whispered line for every row and column and the sum of digits one through nine. <laughs> I'm very good at knowing sums if numbers are triangular, and I, I like my puzzle square, although I'll try them when rectangular. In short, in solving puzzles which no ordinary mortal can, I am the very model of a puzzle-solving gentleman. <laughs> oh my goodness me. That is, I mean, it's really cool. It's really cool. I'm not sure about this no ordinary mortal can. There's a few bits in it that are... Um, slightly too complimentary, but it really is. I love, I love bits about tales of Thomas Snyder and his system of notation. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. Um, my logic skills are on a par with all the Cambridge College dons. I prove this claim quite commonly with cryptic cracking knowledge bombs. I mean, that, that is a lovely rhyming couplet. Um, Bobby, thank you very much for doing that. It really, really did tickle us pink. And, um, yeah, I, I, I look forward to whoever can actually sing this and convert it into something musically um, musically appropriate and not butcher it as I am likely to do. Anyway, um, other news. Um, if you are a patron of the channel, there is a bonus video which I released this morning, which is this one. Uh, let me try and move that over. It is my solve of Tall Cat's Puzzle Shadow. It is a long video, one hour and a half, and that is because that puzzle breaks your brain. So if you want to see my brain get broken, um, that video is for you. And that's over on Patreon right now. Um, what else can I tell you about? Let me talk to about birthdays. Charlotte, it's your birthday today. You've turned 19. And I know this because your sister Emma wrote us a very nice email. Um, and yeah, I'm just delighted to hear how much you enjoy the channel. And I hope today obviously is filled with chocolate cake. Now, Joanna, it's your birthday today, and I know this because your husband Joshua wrote to us. He wrote a lovely email, and apparently he is not with you today because he is finishing his tour on a US submarine. Um, 
He described you, Joanna, as an amazing mother and wife and said you deserve the best birthday ever. So I hope this goes a little tiny way to improving your day. And I hope you have chocolate cake as well, which of course will help. Um, Jordan, you've turned 21 yesterday. I'm so sorry. I think I put it in my diary wrong. It was in my diary today. And then when I looked at the email, it said that your birthday was yesterday. So I, that's Mia Culpa. Um, you're a uni student over in the US uh, and I think you've just broken up for Christmas. So it's holiday time. And Jordan, I hope you have a brilliant day. And finally, Liz, it's your birthday today. And I know this because your friend Dylan wrote to us. And Liz, I hope you have a brilliant birthday too. Um, other than that, the only other thing to mention is the other thing going on over on Patreon, which is, of course, the cryptic scriptures of the Secret Snake Society. Um, here we go. This is this wonderful Sudoku hunt that we've got ongoing, and I've got some more names of successful solvers for you. So well done uh, to Vine uh, Van Hurtsen, I think. I could be butchering that pronunciation. I apologise if so. Uh, John Alistair Warricker, Ian Wallace, Christian Gingina, I think. Daniel, don't know your surname, Daniel, so just Daniel. Um, Bobby Kuzmanowski. David Vance, Craig Wotherspoon, Nick Child, Lepi R64, Mike Bassetti, Inga Tilk, Parker Bond, Rob Sommer, and Lucas Winters. All of you, top marks. Very well played indeed. And now let's get on with the four pyramids. And I even know why it's called the four pyramids, because a cursory scan of this grid shows me that there are, in fact, hidden within it, no less and exactly as many as hmm, four pyramids. That's gonna make a very pretty thumbnail. Um, anyway, the rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Clues outside the grid give the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal. So what's that telling us? It's telling us that this diagonal here, those nine cells sum up to 26. These four cells here sum up to 16. I better get rid of the colors actually, that's going to confuse me. Uh, those four cells sum to 21. Uh, digits cannot repeat within a cage. Okay, so within the pyramids, you cannot repeat a digit. That's okay. That's unsurprising, I suppose, but I've just noticed how many cells there were in a pyramid, which is mildly interesting. Um, cells separated by a white dot must contain consecutive digits. So if this digit here was a one, this digit would have to be a two to make sure these were consecutive with each other. Um, and cells separated by a black dot, and I think there's only one instance of a black dot, um, contain digits in a one to two ratio, i.e. one digit is double the other. So if this was two, this could either be four because four is double two, or it could be one because two is double one. That's how black dots work. Not all dots are given, so it's perfectly possible that these these two cells are consecutive or have a two to one ratio. We just know positive things about these dominoes here. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, one thing actually when I was just looking at the example, 26 is mild, well, okay, no, all right, it's a silly thought, but I will explain it. Um, I thought it was mildly on the low side, and that's because if you think about the average value of a Sudoku cell, that's going to be a five, isn't it? Because if you think about the numbers one to nine, um, the middle digit is five. So that's the average size of a digit. So this diagonal, if it was filled with a completely average total, in fact, if it was filled with the digits one to nine, it would add up to 45. Well, 26 is a lot lower than 45. There is a knowledge bomb. Um, and um, therefore this feels slightly low, but it's, I don't think it feels low enough that it's that restricted. For example, if we tried to minimize this diagonal with just putting one, two, three there, one, two, three there, and one, two, three there, then it would add, add up to only 18. And that's a lot lower than 26. And it suggests that there's an awful lot of degrees of freedom um, along the diagonal. You could certainly put nine into a cell, for example. So it's, it, there isn't actually any meaningful restriction we could make along this diagonal at this point. And this one's worse. This one is closer to being mediocre, 32 how mediocre you are. Um, 
Wow, there's nothing here. There is nothing here. Where this this is okay because like 16 in four cells averaging four 21 is averaging close to five in four cells 17 is there is nothing right so it's got to be it's either geometry or set you know, or a mixture of the two because um there is i don't believe any of these clues outside the grid or let alone the white dots i mean a few the, the sprinkling of white dots these sort of crystals of sugar that eric has sprinkled through the puzzle are, I think, disambiguated white dots. That's what they look like to me. They don't look like how we get a break in. If you want to find a break in with white dots, you need a great big string of them. That's my experience. Um, so, uh, the other, yeah, the other thing I noticed was that the pyramid here, and indeed all of the pyramids, because they're all identical in size, they're all nine cells large. Now, there are only nine different Sudoku digits. So, actually, this pyramid and every other pyramid contains all of the digits once each and I can see things like look at that cell where does this cell go in this box and the answer is in one of two positions look yeah okay and the same is true of these so the tips the sort of the corners of the pyramids are interesting so if I make that cell purple you can because purple can't repeat within its cage purple is in one of those cells and let's make this cell blue and blue again it can't repeat within its cage so it must go up here so these cells the cells the cells in box two that are not in the tips of the pyramid or that are not in well let me put that a different way the tips of the pyramid go in those three cells and that's going to be the same here. So these three cells are going to go in those three cells. These three cells are going to go in those three cells. Now, what does that mean? Uh, sorry, <laughs> I just stopped talking there. That's because I didn't know the answer to the question. That was a rhetorical question. Um, Hmm. What? What? Um, um, uh, I've got nothing here. This is a bit terrifying, actually. This is not. I was wondering if there was some way I could. You know, there's some way of thinking about whether these cells could be in common with the tips of this pyramid. But I don't. I don't even think that's very interesting i mean it would mean that i suppose it would lock green into this cell wouldn't it but this isn't it this this isn't i mean on on the conjecture that this is green you can lock green into this cell i mean that that, that is such you know that's so uh such an extreme hypothesis that i don't think it really bears investigation let alone re repeating oh, this is no this is right okay well this is somehow or other i believe set so it's some sort of set theory have i got my yeah i've got my i've got my scrap i've got one scrabble bag i don't know where the other one is oh and i've got both scrabble bags so we've got to come up with something i think that is geometrically interesting about this puzzle so, okay, let's get rid of our highlighting and think about what sort of set we could make. We could make, have I, in fact, have I already sort of made a set is what I'm thinking. So if I highlight boxes two, four, six, and eight, I'm just going to do this quickly just so I can look at it. Obviously these orange cells, these are Scrabble tiles by the way, that's what I've got in my bag. And I want you to imagine, I don't actually know how many Scrabble tiles I've got in there, but each Scrabble tile has a number on it. Um, that's a five. Um, so imagine that I 
I filled this Scrabble bag with the 36 digits that correspond to these orange cells. Now we know we know what these digits are because each one of these boxes contains the digits one to nine. So at this point, my Scrabble bag contains four ones, four twos, four threes, etc. It contains 36 tiles in all. Now let's highlight in blue these cells. Now, I'm going to put these tiles, the blue, the blue, whatever's in the blue uh, cells, into this Scrabble bag. And you can see that because that pyramid is the digits one to nine, in fact, this Scrabble, ba this Scrabble bag will be filled with exactly the same Scrabble tiles as the other one, because this is just four sets of the digits one to nine uh, as well. So these Scrabble bags at the moment contain identical things, four sets of the digits one to nine. So if I was to remove this digit, whatever, let's say I knew the finished grid I, and I took this cell, this, this cell's digit, and I took it out of both Scrabble bags, clearly both Scrabble bags would then contain 35 Scrabble tiles and they would have identical numbers on them because I'd taken the same thing out of both bags. Now I don't need to know what this digit is to make to, to to apply that logic I can say I'm going to delete all of the all of the tiles that appear in both bags and if I took took those tiles out we would get to this position where we could say that at this point whatever's left in the blue bag which is these digits they must be the same digits as we've got left in the orange bag. And in fact, all I've done here is prove exactly what, what I said at the start, which was to ask the question, where do these three tiles or these th the points of the pyramid go in this box? And you can see that by Sudoku, we've proved before they went in those three cells. So it's not surprising to find there's a global relationship, which is that the blue digits and the orange digits have to be the same, the same digits exactly. That's exactly what we'd expect. But if we prove it by set theory, that's what we'd be doing. Now, now though, this, the thing that I'm seeing here is that these clues outside the grid seem to be overlapping somewhat with the, with the digits we've got. What is that? What does this mean? Is it something to do with... Oh, that's another thought, actually. I wonder if it's the combination of this diagonal and this diagonal. Let me just have a look at that for a moment. Uh, I should have thought of this before, but I didn't. So if we highlight those cells, the green cells... Uh, no, it's not going to do enough damage. Because you obviously, these five digits in the middle box, this cell's doubled, isn't it? That cells in both this diagonal and this diagonal. So we can't just say that the digits we'd see in the Sudoku on in the green cells would add up to 58. They wouldn't because this digit has been double counted within the 26 and the 32. But you can see those digits there. I mean, if we put a one in the middle and we made those other digits two, three, four, and five, the middle digits would add up to 15. This would be counted twice, so that's 16. These cells would add up to one, two, and three as a minimum, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three. So we'd have four lots of six, because one, two, and three add up to six, which is 24, 24, and what did I say, 16 is 40. Ah, no, that's so bad. It's so bad. It's not even, it's hardly worthy of comment. So 40 is the minimum I can put in, I could get these two diagonals to add up to. And they actually add up to 58. So there is an enormous amount of latitude and that thought was absolutely insane. Right, let's get rid of that and think again. So, okay, let me come back to these diagonals then. So is there some way I can use the fact that I know the sum of those cells? The problem is these are in different sets. If this, you know, if that was all one color and this was all another color, then I could, 
I could remove both colours and say, okay, what's left has a difference of five between between the digits. I don't actually, mm, I'm going off this idea. Oh dear, I've gone off this idea. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, so, so after 20 minutes, this is where we are in the solving of the puzzle. Look how much work we've done. We have a totally blank grid, like absolutely blank. Um, right. I mean, I'm assuming here it's not the standard Fistemafel ring. It does certainly doesn't look like that. So for those of you who have not, not, not aware of it, there is um, there is something interesting you can say about the relationship between these cells and that ring. They are the same. They are the same sets of digits. So the sixteen blue digits would be the same as the sixteen digits in the ring, which. No, if anything, this is more likely to be the the weird version of that, isn't it? Where we push this ring out to the border. I can never remember what that ring is. Um, I can't, it, it, it uses the corners somehow. It's... Um, well, let's, let's try and work out what it is. So let's do the perimeter of the grid uh, in one color. And those cells are going to be double counted. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I let's imagine I've totally emptied my Scrabble bag. Um, so I've thrown away all the digits, all the things in my Scrabble bag, and I'm going to refill my orange Scrabble bag with this set of digits instead. So what, what I want to do is that whole row, which we know is the digits one to nine once each. So it's going to be nine tiles for this row, nine tiles for that row nine tiles for this row and nine tiles for, sorry this column and nine tiles for this column maverick flying past I haven't heard much from maverick recently it's because it's so cold probably doesn't want to go up in his aeroplane at the moment um now you so these 30 the, the, those those would be 36 scrabble tiles and you can note that whatever was in this cell is on, is on two scrabble tiles in the bag because it was in this row and it was in this column so that's why this has got 36 Scrabble tiles in it still. Now, let's find a different way of, and, 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 and the exact digits in my Scrabble bag are the digits one to nine, four, one, well, four times each, because there's gonna be a one in this row, there's gonna be a one in this row, there's gonna be a one in this column, and there's gonna be a one in this column. So there should be four digit ones in my Scrabble bag, etc., etc. Now, if I highlight the corner boxes, what do we get? So the corner boxes, obviously that's four sets of the digits, one to nine. That's what I'm gonna put in my blue bag. And from my blue bag and my orange bag, I'm gonna remove digits that are in both bags. So I'll deal with the corners in a moment, but those those digits can come out of, of both bags. And we could say at this point that both Scrabble bags have got the same things left in them. Now, what was going on with the corners? The corners were twice in the orange bag and only once in the blue bag. So if I remove them once from the blue bag and once from the orange bag, there's still going to be one of whatever is the corner digit in the orange bag. So this, these all become orange again. I don't think this is going to be mu much better, is it? Oh, I have at least got the, the points of the pyramids now in a different set to these three. Which, and we know that there's an equivalence, don't we? We know that these two digits do appear in those, but I don't know where they appear in those. So I almost need to put this one into the blue set as well. Ah! But, but the, uh, well, the point of doing this was to say, okay, so at this point we can claim legitimately, we have proved that the blue tiles, the 16 blue tiles are the same as the 16 orange tiles. Hmm. 
Okay, so I think, well, I'm almost going to abandon this as well, I think. What I, what I feel like, the, the, only, the, only thing I, the only thing I can think of is that if I get, if I was to add this into the blue tile, so say, let's say I add, it could be something really meta, this actually, like, hmm, okay, I'm going to try this. If I add, so at the moment, before I just did that blue shading, uh, let me just delete that blue shading. So at this point, whatever I've got in my Scrabble bag on this side, in the blue bag, is an identical set of Scrabble tiles to this bag. Now imagine I put an extra set of the digits one to nine in this bag. That would be akin to the shading that we've now got on the screen. Now these bags are not equal. This one has one set of the digits one to nine extra in it. But what I could do, having, having noted that fact, is I can now say that my blue, I could find this digit in blue, this digit in the blue bag, and this digit in the blue bag, and remove those digits from the orange bag, and we would have maintained that relationship. So we have we have the relationship where this bag is the same as this, except this the blue bag has the digits one to nine once each, once more in it. Now, if I remove these three tiles from blue and those three tiles from orange, I'm removing the same thing from both bags. So I'm gonna do that in the interests of at least exploring whether this could mean anything. So I can do that for all of my, all four of my pyramids. Wow, okay, so now I've managed to create a cross in the grid. But this is a weird cross, isn't it? So what does this cross represent? So now, how many? So there should be 13, did, and there are, aren't there? there? I was gonna say there should be 13 blue cells and there are because at the moment what we've got the 13 tiles left in this bag are one set of the digits one to nine basically plus these four corner orange tiles because we know that the blue tiles include we know that the blue tiles were identical to the orange tiles plus one more set of the digits one to nine so But this is now, this is now. Oh. This feels a bit weird now, doesn't it? Because now I can't do any more cancelling out. I do know. Well, I don't quite know. It depends what the value of that is. I don't quite know. I do, all right, I do, well, I do know something interesting I didn't know before. This is, this is a really interesting puzzle. It's an amazing idea, this, because what I've actually proved here, which is a very strange thing, is that within the blue cross of 13 cells, I definitely have one of each digit, which is so weird, isn't it? Because, because we know that in the blue bag, I added to it one set of the digits one to nine, and I've still got that left in there as a difference between the blue and the orange. So that, and we know, right, and there's a secret in Sudoku, of course, which is something I only tell my favorite people. And that is that the digits one to nine, if you sum them, they sum to 45. So, 45 for nine digits. And what have we got here? We've got 58.
I don't, I don't quite see how to do this. I think I'm just going to have to assign values to the middle cell in order to do the maths on this, to be honest. Um, let's just start with one and then work our way upwards. So if this is a one, what are we now saying? We're saying that I'm confusing myself now as well. We're saying that these, the actual digits we'd expect to be on this diagonal, or yes, we're saying the actual digits here are going to sum to one less, aren't we? Because we're double counting this digit. So that gives us 57 as the total. If we summed each of these digits just once each, we would get 57. But we know that we know that the total cross, including the orange, is equal to 45 plus whatever's in the four orange squares plus whatever's in the four blue squares that match off with the four orange squares. So there are But that, that has to equal 12. That doesn't seem even possible. Oh, no, that is possible. Wow. OK, well, this, this, this is very interesting. Right, so if we were to put, if you put ones and twos in the corner, then one, obviously, one plus two is three. So the orange squares would add up to six. And we would know that these orange squares are repeated somewhere in blue, don't know where, um, where those four cells in blue would add up to six. And but we would know that the other nine cells in blue add up to 45. So that would get us to the 57 that we need. So one actually works. So what we now need to do, if we can prove that two doesn't work and no other number works, we have actually found the break in. And that would be one of the most, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen on the channel. But I've got a horrible feeling that when we do the maths on this, we're going to find that this works as well. So now, I know it doesn't work. It doesn't work because I've got, I'm going lower. Oh my goodness me, this is, a, this is absolutely extraordinary. And this is why only 12 people have solved this. It's because it's absolutely, it's not, it, well, I almost gave up. This, this, is, <laughs> this is it. Because now, if we make this a two, then we know that the individual numbers here, if we were to add up these individual numbers, they would add up to 58 minus two which is 56. But that would imply that it's possible to put 45, uh, 45's worth of digits into nine of the blue cells and then only 11 more for the, the eight cells which are comprised of those four plus their repeats where they, wherever they live in the blue section. And that's never, that's never possible because the absolute minimum we can make these four add up to is six and six times two is 12 and 12 is bigger than 11 another knowledge bomb so that means that we've we've found it this has to be a one these have to be ones and twos obviously if we make this bigger than two we're just getting ourselves into bigger problems um we're getting these would have to become sort of negative numbers and it's not going to work now Thought, well, I've got a, I've got a digit as well, but let, I'm just, I've got a digit. But let me just think about this because now, well, now what are we saying exactly? I'm saying that within the corners of the grid, there are two ones and two twos, but I know that the blue region contains 
those two ones and two twos in blue. So there are two ones and two twos in blue, plus another one and another two in the set of 45 that we know exists in blue. So blue has blue has three ones and three twos in it. I'm not sure what to do with that, but but I, I can get this digit, so I'm doing that. Because look, this is consecutive with one or two. Well, if it was consecutive with one, it would be a two, and that would mean this cell's impossible. So that must be a two, and it must be consecutive with a three, which means that's a two, that's a one, and that's a one by the power of Sudoku. It is outrageous, Eric, that you've made me resort to Sudoku after 35 minutes, but now that black dot now the only other black dot relationship that works in sudoku once you've dismissed anything involving ones twos and threes is the four eight pair uh, if you try and put five onto a black dot you will run into trouble um, right but the other uh, right this comes back to the blue things yeah so remember what what we just said about what blue has to contain it's got to have three digit ones in it well there's one so you can't put any more ones in there i can't put ones in there and i can't put ones in there so there's got to be a one in there and there's got to be a one in there and for twos we know that they've got to be more twos they've got to be oh ah yeah okay i was going to say they've got we've got to put three more twos into blue and we can do that. We can't put any twos in there and we can't put any twos in there by Sudoku, but that's okay. We've sort of got three units left. We can put a two in there, we can put a two in there, and we can put a two in one of the blue cells in box five. And that will get us up to our quota of two-age that we're looking for. What a puzzle this is. This is an, I mean, yesterday's was an absolute work of art. And this, this is sort of matching it. It's absolutely, oh, that's not a one. If that was a one, that would be a two. Ha ha, we've got another digit. Um, so there's a one in one of those three cells. Gosh, I think I'm gonna to have to pay a lot of attention to, oh, I was about to say, I've got to, I was gonna pay a lot of attention to the white dots, but I'm actually going to change my tack here because I've just noticed that that string of digits looks interesting because these digits here add up to 16, but I've noticed those two, because the one is in the blue, the minimum they could be would be a four and a five, which would add up to nine. So that can't be an eight. If that was an eight, we'd already be at 17. So that's a four. This is an eight. Oh, come on. <laughs> We're rocking and rolling. Because remember, these three digits map to the pyramid tips. Now that digit can't go there and it can't go there, so it must go there. Uh, can we, can I deduce which way round this one goes? I'm not sure. Well, I mean, this digit here is obviously in one of those two cells. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyway, what are we up to now? We're up to an absolute minimum of 13. Right, so that's a 3. That's the only way this can possibly work. If this was any bigger than 3, if we made it 4, we'd have 17 on the diagonal. So that is a 3, which means 3 is in one of those 3 cells. This has to be a 4-5 pair. Um, can we do better than that? Probably. Eight is in one of these two cells by Sudoku using these two eights. And pregnant pause when I try and spot something useful that results from this deduction. Um, oh dear. Uh, that white dot white dots always need an even digit on them because one of them because the digits are consecutive there will be an odd and an even digit and I've noticed this white dot can't have two or eight on it 
but I think it might be able to have four on it. If it has four on it, oh, I see. Yeah, maybe it's maybe even it's likely to be a four-five pair. Is it? Uh, oh, oh, hang on. I've got an eight on this diagonal. That might be important. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Look at this diagonal. I'm going to look at this diagonal now because that digit I've just noticed is at least a five. So that's 13 in these. That's at least a three. Is there a reason that can't be a three? Don't know. And that's, oh, that one, this is at least a four, right? So what have we got here? Oh, bobbins. <laughs> it's really close. I think they add up to 20. Now, unfortunately, 20 is not the same as 21. It's an absolute multitude of knowledge bombs today. So there is one degree of freedom here. Um, oh, that's quite sublime, though. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. Right. That, well, this puzzle, this puzzle has had some memorable moments already, but this is right up there for me. Look at this white dot. I was worried about this white dot's ability. In fact, I thought it was going to have a four on it. But now look, if it's got a four on it, could it be a three, four pair? No, that would break this cell. Could it be a four, five pair? No, that would break this cell. So there's no four on this white dot. So this white dot doesn't have two, eight or four on it, must have six on it. So it's either five, six or it's either five, six or six, seven. It's definitely got six on it. Um, now, right. So in row one, this little domino here is interesting. I, just, I don't like red. I'm going to use yellow. Um, that yellow domino, where does it go in row one? Well, one of them is going to go there and one of them is going to go there. Now. Right, so that digit is six or seven then. This can't be five, can it? Because of this four, five pair. So nine in this row is definitely in one of those squares. Oh, well, hang on. Two, three and four in this box. Where do they go? Two, three, four. They've got to go in those squares. So that is a two, three, four triple. These squares definitely include nine. And. Hmm. It's quite hard for me to see the pencil marks against the blue. Maybe I change my, I, I'm reluctant to change my blue colouring, but I think I'm going to need to, because I'm starting to struggle to see exactly what that looks like. So if we get, if we change blue to grey, maybe. I know it's a, it's a much less attractive colour, but I'm going to do that just because I can see the blue pencil marks more easily. Um, right. But I still don't know, do I, how to resolve this? Ah, that digit now. Remember this digit has to make an appearance in this row. So that digit is now four, five or six. Because it's either that digit or it's this one. Sorry, sorry, I got interrupted. Um, it's school holidays now and uh, and I'm dog sitting today as well. And it's just all kicked off. Um, so I'm afraid I've just had to step away for a while. And now I'm going to get completely, I'm going to completely forget. What have I, okay, I've just filled in those cells, four, five and six, um, which is because I knew, yes, because I knew that, this cell has to appear in one of those cells and it can't be eight. Right. So that is why I've done that. And now for our next trick, we will say that we shall investigate the, hmm, I don't know what we're going to investigate actually. This white dot maybe, because there's an eight and a four here. So this has got to have 
an even digit on it. Now, if that even digit is 2, well, yeah, okay, if that even digit is 2, it couldn't be a 2-3 pair, because then both of those cells would be a 4. So if it is a 2, it's got to be a 2-1. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the screaming. But anyway, it's all in good fun. Um, the, this is a 2-1 pair. This would be a 2-1 in this order. But the problem is this could also be a 6. Now, if that's a 6 on here, how's that play? So, right, if that's a 6, that would be a 6. Oh, I see, and that would be a 6. So 6... Is there any restriction? Oh, well, actually, there is a restriction. If, the, if there was 6 on here, it couldn't be 6, 5, because that would break that cell. So if it's 6 on here, it has to be 6, 7. And if it's 6, so this would be a 5. This would be a 6. If this is a 5, that would be a 4. That would be a 3. That would be a 2. That would be a 4. The world would uh, we'd be kicked into gear, wouldn't we? Um... But I've got a horrible feeling that there is some obvious reason I know the answer to whether the, which version of thingies this is. But unfortunately, I'm not spotting it. Bobbins. Bobbins, Bobbins face. What about... Um, okay, don't like the look of that white dot. Do I like the look of this white dot? No. It's distinctly unpleasant to look at. It's an eyesore on the puzzle. Um, what about the 17 diagonal? What do we know about that? That feels like, that feels underused given these other diagonals have been useful. So what are we looking at? We're looking at those cells. Let's highlight them in a nice color. Do I like red? I don't mind it actually. Um, right, okay, that digit can't be 1, 2, or 3, so that's at least 4. This one also doesn't seem... To, yeah, okay, that's also not 1, 2, or 3. Oh, okay, right, yeah, and I suppose those two could be the same digit, couldn't they? Because, again, the tips of the pyramid... We've got to remember, the tips of the pyramids go into those three... Oh, where's that? Oh, yes, we've got to remember the thing that's totally obvious, which is that that three has to go there, apparently. Um, because, because, because we know those three digits in this box have to be in those three squares. That can't be a three because there's a three up there. So the only one of, one of the tips that seems to be able to be that one is that one. So that's a three. Uh, okay, three is in one of those cells. That is distinctly underwhelming, isn't it? So, th so that digit is in one of those two cells. So if that if that was a four, that couldn't be a four. But that wouldn't mean that couldn't be a four. How strange. Okay. Um. Uh, I don't actually, I don't think that's done anything. Okay, so let's have a look down here. We've got four, four, three, apparently. Is that really possible? That would give us, um, what would that give us? 11. So we've got a minimum of 11 in those three cells, if this can be a three, which might be possible. So that cell, Oh, okay. This cell can't be one, two, three, or four, apparently. So that is at least five. So now we're up to 16. Okay, right. So this one's got one degree of freedom on it as well. So we can make this is five or six. This is three or four. This is four or five. Ah, and that's four or five. So that gives me a four or five pair here, apparently. And that gives me a four or five pair there. That's beautiful. This puzzle is beautiful, isn't it? It's 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 amazing that you can have that that whole stuff at the beginning, let alone that yellow thing over there, which I thought was lovely. And now this thing as well is absolutely gorgeous because this has got one degree of freedom. That has to be a four or a five. 
and, th and that's making a pair here in the tips of the pyramid which we know transpose here. Now what I don't know if we know is whether or not this one is actually the same digit as this one because that we could start to color our fours and fives if so couldn't we? Do I know whether that digit is the same as this? Or maybe it can't be the same as this. If that's double five, that doesn't work. This is not double five. For double four, these would have to, oh, they can add up to nine. Okay. Um. Ah, here's another point, actually. That cell can't be a four because that removes the degree of freedom, which would mean we have to take the lowest digit from the pairs in the rest of the cells. But if I make that a four, I'm making that a five and I'm picking the highest digit. So they would add up to nine and then those two can't add up to eight. That's beautiful. Right. So that's a three. That's not a three. That's in a tip, which means there's a three down here. Oh, bobbing some bobbing's face again. Ah! Oh, how unbelievable. I keep getting these amazing, like, I think they're going to be amazing finds. And then they don't do anything. So. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on. There's got to be a three down here. This is a five or a six. So one of these digits is a five or a six. I wish I knew which one. Um, golly. <laughs> okay. Golly, gosh. Right, so what do I do now? Anyone got any ideas? Could they just send them back in time and across to Surrey for me, please? I think it might be to do with colouring over here. Is there a way? I'm going to just get rid of my green highlighting and my green and my red highlighting for a moment and just see if I can see if there's some sort of communication between these digits. Um, I'll get rid of my yellow over here. Yellow was saying these to those two digits are yellow, wasn't it? So let's make that yellow. That means that's yellow. Let's make this blue. That, oh, although blue is a bit, uh, let's go make it red. Um, now, what I need to do somehow, some way, is to get these colours to map here or here. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Um, Obviously, if I know that's a five, then I know that is red. Because this couldn't be double five. I know, that doesn't seem to do it, does it? Right, there must be something else then. This white dot can't have four on it. It's got... Oh, maybe Sudoku. Let's try Sudoku. One in that box is a bit restricted. Um, this, can I do better than that? Double click the twos. I don't actually have many digits in the grid, so that doesn't feel very, doesn't feel very easy, does it? Um, what about, oh, hang on, that digit can't be a three. I was just looking at those three pencil marks there and thinking thinking about the fact that this there's a massive cage. If that's a three, am I not going to get two threes in the same column here? Or have I just mis misanalyzed that? If that's a three, that has to be a... I've got this three pencil mark here, so that definitely has to be a three. And now, yeah, I can't put three in box six anymore. That can't be a three because there's a three under it. And th these can't be threes because there's a three in their cage already. Aha. Right. So that's four. And that's going to use my degree of freedom up. Hooray. 
so this four I'm just I'm just gonna pause for a moment yeah oh well actually no look that four is seeing that so that's now five that's now four which we know is the same as that what was oh that's on the low side so that's not resolving this diagonal I've still got uh, that's another thought I've still got to put four in gray um, but anyway let's come back over here we've got 12 we need nine more so that has to be five that has to be four and if that's five that means there's a five in here remember because we were we, originally we noted those cells have to be equivalent so that is not got seven on it because it does have six so this is a five six pair which means that's a six. Oh, please please <laughs> i'm almost begging please just allow me to finish you puzzle because this is this is another absolutely stellar puzzle um come on oh that being five or six doesn't put any pressure on this four it is quite difficult actually no, it's very, it's almost impossible. Where, remember the grey cells, the grey cells in the puzzle, they are one set of the digits one to nine plus two ones and two twos. So where do I put the four that must exist in grey? Well, it's not there, it's not here, it's not there because of this four, it's not either of those cells, it's not either of these because of this four, and it's not that one. So it's that one. So that's a four. That's the only place a four can go in grey. Which, how many fours have we got in the grid now? Lots. Well, ah, ah, yes, yes. This four has given me these. Now I can colour these in. So that's red, that's yellow. How many fours have I got now then? Oh, sorry, I have to go back to numbers and double click to actually see uh, or count them myself, which would be incredibly unreasonable. Um, four in one of those. Oh, four nearly on this white dot. If that's four, that can't be three. It would have to be five. Why can't that be five? Why can't this little digit be five? Have we already had a five in grey? No. I think it maybe could be five. Um, but, but hang on I got a 5 here so these are adding up to 12 now so that's a 5 in order to make the maths work so, oh, this is so clever I can't believe it I cannot believe this watch now this is a 5 and you might say well why is that exciting well it's exciting for me because now I have my 5 in grey and that means I think this cell cannot be another five because that would mean there would be two fives in my, imagine this is grey bag and there are not two fives in it, there's one five. So this, if this is four now, that has no option. So that is not four, ah, not four, that must be the four, that must be the four. So this is now either six or eight. Can it really, well, if it was eight, it would have to be the eight there. This would have to be seven or nine, which would be a little bit useful. Um, and if it's six, all bets are off. Oh, actually, I'm not even sure that's worth pencil marking. I think this has still got latitude. Um, what about... Oh no, it's much simpler than that, isn't it? Look, there's a five, there's a five on the dot by Sudoku and there's no four on the dot. So it's got to be a five, six pair. Oh, hooray. Wow. So this is a five, six pair, which fixes the six over here. Look, so this is now a seven, eight, nine triple. And we can pause for breath and wonder what the next deduction is going to be. This, right, what about this diagonal now? Because actually, I almost know enough about it. I've got six there, seven, and another eight, that's 15. Oh, well that means I need 17 more. 
So those two squares have got to be 8 and 9, and they definitely don't include a 2. So that's a 2. This is an 8-9 pair. And now we can probably get the other diagonal, can we? We've got 6, 7, 8, 12. I know one of those is a 1. So that's 13. I need 13 more. Oh, oh I see. Okay. And I've got a 5 or a 6. So I'm going to have an 8 or a 7 into these squares. So this, these are from 1, 7 and 8. And can we do any better than that? Maybe not. Um, oh no, well I know. I know. Yes, no, I can. Because how could it be 8? If it was eight, there would be two eights in grey again. Oh, this is um, this is so clever. This puzzle. I cannot, I cannot emphasise enough how impressive I find this. Right, and if that's one seven, that needs to be a six because we needed thirteen more. So that's five. That gets me a six in grey. So now let's just take an audit. Have we got what we expect in grey? We've got. We should have one and two. One and two. And now, so I've taken those out, which are akin to orange, and we should be left with one of each digit. Well, there's a one over here. There's a two and a three. That's a four. There's a five, a six, a seven over here, and an eight, nine pair. So it's right. I'm sure this is right. I mean, you, this cannot happen by accident. This is pure design. Now, these squares are seven, eight. Well, there's the seven, eight, and nine by Sudoku. But there's a seven here, so this is an eight nine pair, and we know the order. Come on, eight nine seven. Um, nine by Sudoku goes exactly there, so that's eight. That's nine. Nine goes here by Sudoku. Um, oh, this is I find this so exciting. <laughs> I know I'm a bit strange, but I do. Right, look. That can't be six. There's no six up here. So this is five. Um, so now in this box, I need sixes and sevens. Let's put six and seven in. Can we can we deduce that? Maybe not. Um, oh, no. Come on. Come on. You want to give me a few more treats, please? Little puzzle. I know you've already been incredibly generous, but please be a little bit more generous now. Just a little bit more. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Do not get stuck, Simon. It's unforgivable in a puzzle of this quality to get stuck. We could go for... Oh, dear. <laughs> um... Oh, five. Sudoku. Go for Sudoku, if in doubt. Oh, that's huge. If there's no six on that dot, we know it's got a two on it. So that's two, that's one, that's one, that's seven. That's two, that's three. Uh, so that is not three. Well, a little three pattern down there. Two by Sudoku is in one of those cells. Um, these squares have got to be three, six and seven which we don't know a great deal about, actually. I know that's not three. So in this column, we need sixes, sevens and eights. So that is a naked single eight. That's a one. That The six in the column, it can only go there. So that becomes a seven. Wow. OK, and we need two, three and six. Into these. Ah, so two must go here. And this is a 3-6 pair. My scanning's deserted me because I can't see why that's resolved. That becomes a 7. That becomes a 7. That becomes a 9. There is now, of all things, a 7 in here. So we have to put 7 in one of the tips, which mustn't help it. There, so that becomes 7. That becomes 6. That fixes the 6-3 at the bottom. The 3-7 at the top. Wow, wow, wow. Honestly, this is just... That's now 7 by... So that interrupts the three, that gets me a one. This is just unbelievable. It's unbelievable setting. Nine, eight, that looks like it's a five according to Sudoku. Um, this column hasn't got an eight in it. Those squares have got to be two, six and nine. 
so that's a two and this should be a six nine pair let's check i'm just checking the the tips of the pyramids work i think they do right what about this white dot is obviously going to matter isn't it um right that cell there where does two go in this row it goes on the dot so this has got to be one or three and it can't be three so it's a one that cell is now an eight or nine by sudoku and it can't be nine eight sorry so it's nine nine eight nine six six goes in here we need to put seven and eight into this box eight and seven That is just absolutely mind-blowing. Again, what a run of puzzles this has been the last few days. I mean, I feel like I say that a lot on the channel, but that is quite simply stunning again. Um, Eric, take a bow. That is one of the great puzzles. I almost gave up, actually. I, re I really did. I was completely nonplussed at the start. Um, but you can worry away at it. And what's, what's really impressive about this is that it's an unbelievably beautiful break-in. But then the logic stays amazing. It, it's a bit like yesterday's, you know, where the logic stayed amazing um, right to the end. You know, and using the tips and using the, the judicious selection of sugar sprinkled around the grid, the clever ideas around the diagonals. I mean... The fact that the grey had to contain one of each digit. What a puzzle. What a puzzle. Another long video. But there we go. I'm sorry. I'm not really sorry, to be honest. I mean, if I'm not meant to do puzzles like this, I don't know what the point of me is. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you are still here and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It would really help um, with the algorithms or maybe just drop the video a like. We'd really appreciate it. And we'll be back later with another edition. We're cracking the cryptic.